This is Good Times Radio TV and Good Times Friday. That was Death Cab for Cutie and a Lack of Color. Great album, actually. That's off of uh, Transatlanticism, which is what actually got me into that band in the first place. Prior to them, I just thought there were some indie, indie punks, and I didn't want anything to do, do with them. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is WRC 88.7 FM, Elmhurst College Radio, and we're here live with Down and Dirty. Gentlemen, what is going on? Woo! How's it it's going? going. <laughs> it's going? It's going well. I'm a bit sick, but it's going well. <laughs> So we are we are here with uh, Magic Ryan L A and Joey the Kid, which make up uh, Down and Dirty Gentlemen. Um, my band Tomorrow's Alliance. We played a show with you a couple months back um, at what is that that place called the Cairo Bar. Cairo Bar. Bar. Cairo Bar. And you you guys were awesome. We we played a band or two before you guys, and it's like you know the other bands were good, and I mean you know we were we were good, but it was like you you guys came dressed up in these. And like, like you guys look still like you're straight out of the '70s slash '80s. I mean, it's it's it's, it's awesome. No, no. And then you, and then you guys play, and you're so good. I mean, you guys are awesome. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, you know, you, you guys are in your like mid to late twenties. Then I find out that you, I mean, you guys are all fairly young still. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. Like, around Just my, turned twenty. And then I'm also thinking, and don't take this the wrong way, but I'm thinking like, okay, they're really really good. They're probably gonna be jerks. They're probably gonna be dicks. And you guys are like the coolest coolest dudes, which, which, which made it even. Even better. Thank you so well, much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. So, gentlemen, what is going on? What's up? <laughs> Not much, man. I mean, gotta say that show was definitely a lot of fun. That was an awesome, awesome show, man. You, you guys rocked the hell out of it. Oh, hell yeah. You guys didn't do too bad yourself. So I, I remember you guys playing out there and doing a little interview afterwards. That was awesome. Thank you, LA. Thank you, man. Um, just to say really, really quick, these actually are their 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 real names. Um, LA Joy the Kid and Magic. The only guy that made up his name is Ryan. <laughs> yeah. 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 Took us a little while, but <laughs> we found it. <laughs> yeah. 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 We put a couple right. names in a hat. We picked one. <laughs> so, gentlemen, you guys are out of Joliet, right? Uh, yep. Yeah. Joliet Plainfield around there. How did yeah. you you guys come to a meet, and how did this whole band get kind of running? Um, when I back when I moved here in the eighth grade, I met Ryan, and his name wasn't Ryan at the time. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it was like uh, Felipe or something. Yeah, Felipe. <laughs> I believe that's right. Um, and we started playing together, just me and him. And with one of our buddies, and uh, we went through a couple of different singers, couldn't really find anyone that fit, and then we ran into Magic, and his style fit perfectly. It was it just clicked. We went through a couple different drummers, on and off, on and off, nothing ever really making a full connection until we met Joey the Kid, and then as soon as we found him, everything it all just came together as one. The band just became solid, like, and since then, I mean, we put out our second CD with Joey the Kid. And uh, that CD is going great. It's called Taste of Rock and Roll, mm -hmm. and uh, now we're working on some new songs for our third one as well. Right on. When when do you guys expect your third album to be out? Oh, uh, not sure yet. Still <laughs> working on the tunes. Uh, getting ready to go on tour in March though. So right on. So what what is is this tour gonna cover? Where are you guys gonna be going? Uh, we'll be going to um, Oklahoma, Texas, Man. Arizona, awesome. Las Vegas. We get um, our day off in Las Vegas. Yeah. 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 Las Vegas. Oh yeah. Um, going to Kansas. Um, we got a few places going. Our tour schedule will be up on our Facebook uh, shortly. Awesome. So you you guys are all pretty pretty young, right? I mean, do you guys mind giving out your ages? Please? I just turned twenty like two three weeks ago. Yeah, twenty. I'm nineteen. 19. I'm fifteen. Fifteen. That's right. You're the. <laughs> yeah. And I'm twenty. Twenty. All right. So you guys are young and going on tour, man. We still gotta sign the waivers to get in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, guys. That's really awesome. So then, all right, this is your second album, and this is called Taste of Rock and Roll. Came out last year. Mm -hmm. um, one question I'd like to ask is how you guys got a picture of my sister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think you want to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting story on its own. Yeah. In, in all honesty, though, so now you guys don't have a copy of your first album here, do you? No. You no. What is the difference between your first and second album? Even this, as far as like oh, quality, definitely the production. It's not. It's not like. It's not, like a, yeah, it's not mm -hmm. a step above. It's a. It's like a way different band like you listen to the first cd it's awesome it's got its moments and then you listen to the second one and you see just such a big growth from all of us and then you hear the difference from joey playing than from our other drummer you hear the difference in like my voice and how it's matured you, see, you can hear ryan's talent growing you can just everything grew like especially the guitars is i don't know it's just it's, it's just wow. awesome <laughs> so let's like why don't you guys delve in, into that a bit as far as the difference, even just musically, between one and one and two? Like, what kind of a... I mean, were you guys going for the same sound to your first album as your second album? Or? Well, the first album, uh, we had a little bit of a different writing team. Um, 
it was a little bit more it was still the same style but it was a little bit more progressive on the drum beat wise and then uh on the second album we tried to grow more from where the first one was and become more of a solid foundation of sound yeah. and the uh the drums the difference in the drums make a very big difference on this album um they're very they're very powerful drums and uh still the same style but we grew more as a band and became a little bit more harder rock like rock and roll and uh we really want to dive into that like yeah. rock and roll you know right on that so came what from like a blues edge kind yeah. of and then me and him started writing together when i got in okay so I think you'll probably hear that a lot i think we found ourselves more as musicians in this album yeah than <laughs> the last definitely. one so that's what's going to make the third one that much better for you. You oh, guys yeah. have found it, and now you guys yeah. are just going to yeah. grow on that. Yeah. What, what can we expect from the third album? <laughs> it's going to blow this one out. It's going to blow the second one out of the water. That's our plan. We always want to completely outdo ourselves each album. Okay. So you can definitely look forward to some killer tunes, like some, I would say, leaps and bounds, like from the first one to the second one just as much to the third one yeah right on now when you you guys were talking about how the writing team kind of changed from the first album to the second one why don't you guys talk to me about how do you guys write your songs is there like a general team that kind of does it out of the uh, four of you guys or how does that lead how does that go it's usually me and him and our manager like he'll give us a lyric a wall of a riff and then we'll just all put it together mm -hmm. it usually comes together pretty good yep mm -hmm. and we're uh we're working on all of us uh working real hard together like we'll come up with one riff and then uh we'll expand on that riff and each person will try to throw in an individual piece or a taste of like different style and feeling but um joey and i come up with most of the base material like the foundation for it and then okay. we evolve on it cool mm -hmm. have you guys written anything at all with the with the group or are you guys some more kind of there for um i've not written full songs i've written you know licks and whatnot right on. here and there because i mean obviously we all have very different music backgrounds mm -hmm. so it's all about the melting pot and trying to get it all into one style mm -hmm. what, which what is do you guys there. feel that you each bring to the band well that's a good question that is a really <laughs> good question <laughs> well <laughs> we i don't know i guess uh, Ryan and Joey, they definitely bring the party and the entertainment because <laughs> when they get when these guys get to go back and forth <laughs> arguing between the <laughs> well, I feel like whenever time anytime Joey's playing a drum solo, it's just dissing Ryan. Like I, <laughs> it's just if you ever see him, like, Joey's just sitting there and he's just always looking at Ryan. He's kind of just like screw you, man. It's more <laughs> 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 we love. We don't really hate each love other. Hate relationships. We love to hate, we love each, hate each other. other. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Right on, gentlemen. Well, let's let's talk about your guys' sound. You guys have that, like, you guys sound like you're straight out of the 70s or 80s, like I said, which is awesome, because I'm a big fan of 70s and 80s rock. That's, mm -hmm. like, my 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 main thing there. And um, how did how did you guys kind of come up with that sound? Was it something that you guys like, okay, let's try to write a song that sounds like it came out of this era? Or did you guys just kind of generally just kind of find that you guys were just writing that kind of music? Um, well... As me personally, I grew up listening, you know, to punk, Blink-182, Green Day, that stuff. And then I got a bit heavier, started listening to Slayer, Metallica, you know, Six Feet Under, that stuff. And then when I met Leonard, he kind of showed me this different light of music, you know. Leonard, who is, who is Leonard? L.A. L.A., L.A. Who's Leonard? Oh, no, no. sorry. Um, Skinner's our butler. <laughs> and uh, he kind of showed me that different style, you know, Aerosmithy, Kiss. And I started listening to that, so I mean, I have a wide variety of background. So I try to bring, you know, that punk aspect into it along with his style. And, yeah. and mostly, like, when we first started a band, actually, when I, when I first got in the band, like, a lot of the songs, were, like, it was all over the place. It wasn't just one, one kind of genre. It was, we were, it was kind of, we were dipping our toes into, like, a bunch of different kind of, different kind of music. And finally, just one day, we just figured, like, it's just try our hand at rock and roll. Like we all love the music. We all we all know Copyright. we we have we all listen to the music. We all love those bands. We see how much of a show they put on. Why can't we try our hand in that? You know, as soon as we did that, we wrote our first rock and roll song, which was Tear It Up, and that's where it started flying. That's where the band actually started growing. Right on. 
Now, what do your parents think about you know you guys going out and playing gigs? <laughs> they they up raise us. It's better yeah. raise us. Yeah. 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 Dark roots are definitely solid. Yeah, the foundation my dad of definitely saw it coming. Yeah, yours did too. <laughs> yep. It's just yeah. awesome because I mean you 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 guys have put like your whole lives into this in this the sense I mean you know you know how you guys dress your your hair and just everything I mean you know you guys fit the part like you know you guys dress the the part as opposed to just wearing you know. Whatever I mean, you know, you know what I mean. Like we're, yeah. what, what it's I'm just who we are. Kind of yeah, yeah, it's not a costume. It. It's yeah, definitely it's, how we dress. We don't have like day. a wardrobe in the back like Lady Gaga. Yeah. You know, she performs <laughs> that way. But no, this yeah. is this Takes is how we are. Meat suit. Yeah, this is what we wear every day. You know. Yeah. yeah. Like it's become a regular thing for us. Man, that is really awesome. So, who are some of the inspirations that have helped you guys to kind of form this your running 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 style? We we've talked a bit about it, but like you you mentioned the Aerosmith, but then. Brian, you, you also mentioned Blink One Eighty Two. Like, you know, I mean, do you think that even kind of Blink had a bit of a, a bit of a probably nudge somewhere in the baseline, the depths mm-hmm. of the baseline. Um, definitely with, I guess, the groove. Not to mention a mohawk when I first met him. I've been through some styles, but um, <laughs> I definitely think Blink One Eighty Two and that punk esque music has helped me to write more. I guess, groovy like head bobbing kind of bass lines mm-hmm. along with you know reggae music that I recently have just gotten into <laughs> helping me out a lot mm-hmm. but I mean it's all just our melting pot you yeah. know yeah. like he Steve Magic <laughs> is more into uh, heavier music hardcore music mm-hmm. you know? and, and then yeah. Joey and I are more into like uh, like 70s like Deep Purple Led Zeppelin and like Aerosmith, Kiss, Guns N' Roses, and like we take a little bit from each and like blend into one. And make our sound down and dirty. Mm-hmm. Right exactly. on, down and dirty. Yeah, yeah. how did you guys come, come up with the, uh, the <laughs> band name? <laughs> well, we went through a, a long list. Before we were in Down and Dirty, we had a separate band called Schism when we were very young. And um, we were very just like, young. all right different direction we want to go in a different route and wanted to do rock and roll and we were like what would be a good name for a rock and roll band came up with all these different uh ideas and uh different logo designs and then next thing you know it was like down and dirty it just like stuck as soon as it was there it was just like we got it that's what we're gonna be down and dirty like it's perfect for the style it fits our image it fits our music it just I still think right it should yeah. be called aphrodisiac jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I was driving up here actually, and there was a foreigner song. I think it's double, double vision. Double vision. Mm-hmm. And one of the first lyrics is, you know, you know, I'm feeling down and dirty or oh, something. Yeah. And I was thinking like, hey, you know, I wonder if maybe that's where they got their name for some reason. For some reason. There's a, I've noticed a lot of that down yeah. and dirty a lyric in a lot of. Oh songs. yeah, and every yeah. time I hear it, I'm like, I'm oh yeah. <laughs> I'm a little excited. <laughs> yeah. They're talking about us. Foreigners plugging us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, awesome. Um, really, really quick, Matt, 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 you guys. I just want to ask you really quick because um, you you've got this awesome voice, man. I mean, it's something like it's really uh. It's got like uh, you've got this like foreigner esque voice, like this really strong, but it's it's not just like, just like foreigner because that's too clean. It's like I don't know, man. You just got this awesome voice that we just don't don't hear it anymore. Mm-hmm. How did you kind of find that, or did you know had, have you taken let like you know have, have have you taken lessons? Like, do you can you sing a different way besides this way, or is that just the way that you sing? Well, like, how did you find that? I would say uh, I've actually been singing choir my whole life, like since I can remember, and um. I spent pretty much all of my school life like doing the musicals and singing choir and stuff like that. I started to actually started taking lessons and before I was in this band, I was actually focusing mostly like I was trying to learn how to scream and trying to do that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then this kind of, like being in this band, it kind of punched me in the face and I learned like I could do so much more different things with my voice. Like I can go from like a choir tone and then pull off the rasp and the stuff that you hear live, you mm-hmm. know. And I, I don't know. I guess it was just kind of, kind of born with it. Right on. One of the most versatile singers I've ever met. He's fantastic. Yeah, yeah really, really awesome. How do you guys find the the songs that you guys cover? Because you 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 guys also play play covers, and they're always really, really good. But how do you guys find those songs? Like, how do you guys choose to do one Aerosmith song over another? Is it just based on like what you guys like or what the crowd likes, or easier it's, to sing? It's a combination play? of both. Yeah. It's uh, what we like and what also the crowd is going to react to the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and like our um, friends will tell us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it rocks. 
You should rap. try this song. You should try that song. We we should try. We try to go for the ones that aren't covered too much. You know, the ones that are kind of kind of thrown to the side. Yeah. Like the the diamonds in the rough. I would right. say like the songs that that I know like we know that we could play awesome. Like, yeah. Rock them up a bit. Yeah. yeah. Something that was really awesome is like you you guys covered in. Oh, I don't remember what song it was prior to, but it was like you know Aerosmith, Guns N' Roses, or something. And then, and then you you guys played John Mellencamp. Oh yeah, 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 like, yeah, like, yeah, that was yeah, right. Yeah. That was really really cool. It's definitely you know a very good um you know diverse uh, uh, li- list of uh, songs. Um, who are some of your guys' idols that you guys would love to meet if you guys ever could meet them, even if they're dead? Not that I'm saying they'll die and meet them. I'm saying you know like if you guys <laughs> could meet some of your idols, like who would they be, um, and why? And we'll go around with everybody, Ryan. Um, Nikki Six <laughs> from Motley yeah, Crue because thing. one I love his style and his whole um, outlook I guess on life, mm-hmm. what he's been through. I've read you know multiple books and seen all the documentaries and whatnot. And as far as like music wise, Jason Newstead from Metallica. Okay, he's the reason I started playing bass or wanted a bass in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. So definitely give some props out to him. Very, very love awesome. to meet him. Um, I mostly grew up on uh, Bon Jovi and Journey, so like if I could, I would love to meet Steve Perry. Like he's yep. definitely one of my favorite singers. I I love his tone. I love I love his range. Uh, like hearing the new singer that they have in the band, like everybody's so saying that he sounds like Steve singing. Perry, but I don't hear it at all. Steve Perry's got such a distinct voice, and I I don't know like. There's something about it. Every time I hear him, it's just like goosebumps, and it's just I just want to sing along with him. And yeah. Definitely, he's the one I would definitely like to meet. Awesome. I mean, there's a lot of drummers I'd like to meet. Like, very many. As many as possible. Stanton Moore, Terry Bazio, Carl Palmer, Tony Royster. But, I mean, guitar player-wise, like, band-wise, probably Richie Blackmore. Okay. Him and his castle. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, as many people as possible, honestly. Sweet. Uh, me, I'd love to meet Slash... One of my biggest influences, Slash, Joe Perry, Ace Freely, they're they're all fantastic. Um, Jimmy Page is a fantastic oh, yeah, guitar player as well, and uh, I'd like to really sit down with each of those guys and just talk like even ten minutes, just kick the shit with them for a little that's bit. Right. Play some riffs. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome, man. I would personally like like to meet Martha Stewart. I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, should we run into her? Seventies rock, you know, Martha. <laughs> she actually she cooked dinner for us last night. God, that that that'd be nice. Wouldn't it be nice? I mean, just to meet her and she'd say, "God loves your band. Let me cook you some dinner." How was it in jail? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about jail. <laughs> Awesome, guys. Well, all right. Well, you guys have been kicking butt and taking names for a couple of years now. Your latest album came out last last year, which is awesome. Really, really awesome. Taste of Rock and Roll. Beautiful lady on the cover, my sister. Uh, <laughs> stop saying, saying that. Very nice lady, by the way. That's yeah. hot chicks in the video, too. Yeah, speaking of, of which, let's actually talk about that really, really quick. You guys said that last summer you guys shot a video the same day as a show, right? Yes. Yeah. You guys finished the yeah. the. Uh, video made it to the show on on, on, t- on time, right? Yes. Yeah. How, what was that that like? Now this is your guys' first video you guys ever shot yep. or yes. the first yes. video. Yes. What was that that like? Oh my it god! It was very yeah. fun. Oh yeah. Very long day. We woke up pretty early, you know, earlier than we normally would on a Saturday. Yeah. And did all our pre-filming, you know, and then went to our show that night and actually filmed at the show for the video. And, you know, did the whole cleanup thing afterwards. So it was a very long night, wow. but yeah. it was definitely worth it in the end. Yeah, it was yeah. exhilarating, man. Just yeah. uh, <laughs> going through the process of, like, actually making a music video. You know, you, you, you go online and you see music videos all the time, and you're like, oh, this is so cool, you know? And then when you're actually making a music video, it's like, wow, there's a lot that actually goes into it. Yeah. And, yeah. like, oh, yeah. just going through the process, like, each step and each scene and, like, storyboarding and, like, just this putting it together angle. piece by piece and, like, just watching your your project grow and like turn out to be a final product of an actual music video is just such a great experience. Yeah, that's really awesome. So you guys are you know for doing that uh, again, you guys. Are oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. We're like three or four. On your next, next yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be coming out with another one soon. That'd be yes. great. Plus, it's a good way to pick up chicks. It is. Hey, hey, check, video. Out, hey, yeah. check out our music video real quick. You got a music video? <laughs> <laughs> Kinda. Yes, it is. <laughs> Depends on what you mean by that. By the way, that's how we met your sister, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your hands off her. <laughs> um, so when can we expect your your third album out then? 
next couple of years. Next couple of years. <laughs> yeah, we have no, we have no clue. We actually ju- we started working we started working on some new tunes just now. So okay, and it's it's still still in the works. It's definitely coming yeah. up up the after the oh, yeah. the tour and all right. Oh yeah, oh, mm-hmm. that. and then we're we'll gonna be going hardcore and working on the CD. Yep. Awesome. Well, guys, I want to thank you guys very very much for for being on. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us, man. Yeah. Joey the Kid, Nat Magic, Magic, and such a crazy name, Ryan. God, I know, yeah. I don't know where oh, it came geez, from. Come Ryan. Who names they are Ryan? down and dirty here on WRC 88, 88.7 FM Elmhurst College Radio. Where can people check you guys out? You can find us at uh, www.facebook.com slash down and dirty Chicago. Awesome. Um, our YouTube account is youtube.com slash down and dirty Chicago. You can find our music video there. And uh, we also have a MySpace. Ooh. If anyone you MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> that, that's yeah. off the old MySpace. Yeah, MySpace.com <laughs> slash uh, down and dirty band. And then we have a link on our Facebooks and our MySpaces to our Twitter as well. Mm-hmm. They're all interlinked, connected. Mm-hmm. So find one of them, you find them all. Mm-hmm. Right on, guys. CDs on iTunes. Sweet. Yeah. So iTunes, guys. CD Baby, Amazon. Yeah. We're on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Google it. Awesome, guys. Wait, thank thank you guys very much for, for being on on tonight. This this was was awesome. We'll definitely talk afterwards too. And then um, if you guys want to stick around uh, down in, in Dirty, they're gonna let us know about what what shows they're gonna be playing next. So please stick around. This is WRC eighty eight point seven FM Elmhurst College Radio. If you guys would like to talk to them per, per, personally, just give us a call here at six three zero six one seven five six eight three six three zero six one seven love, and we'll talk to you guys soon. This is Down and Dirty on WRC and Taste of Rock and Roll. Sweet deal, guys. Thanks for being on. Dude, I <laughs> called you guys your real name. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Hey, nine for... Oh, f- uh, Ryan. 